Hi everyone, Sean here from Cordistry.com. Today I'm going to show you how to play Ship to Wreck by Florence and the Machine. It's an awesome driving acoustic rock song with a pretty sweet riff in it. And I'm going to show you how to play that riff and all the chords and stuff in this lesson. If you check the description, you're going to find a link to the tabs. And while you're down there, you'll see my social media links and you can hit that subscribe button for more lessons just like this one. All right, I'm going to zoom in now so we can check this one out. All right, so we're in standard tuning today, and I'm gonna show you how to play the riff first before we get into the chords, chord progressions, and strum patterns. So let's learn how to play this thing. Here's how it sounds. We're starting on fret two, of the G string. Use your second finger for this note. We're gonna go one, two, and three, and. And then after that, we're gonna hit fret three of the D string. And then go, which is gonna be three, 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 two. Use your third finger here. And then we're going to do open on the A string. And then three more, hitting fret three of the low E string to finish off. When you loop back around, you're going to anticipate with an open G string. So when you finish the second time, don't play that extra anticipated pickup note. One more time, I'll play it slow. So you play that twice for the intro, and you play it twice during the first chorus as well. In the second chorus and the third chorus, you're going to end up playing that four times in a row. So just continue to repeat it, anticipating every time. On the last time though, again, don't add that extra note because you're not going to be looping. You're just going to leave it at the third fret of the E string. So that's how the riff goes. You can, again, play that during all of those different sections, but there are chord progressions happening. So you can either play the chords or the riff, depending on how you're gonna play this thing. Let's cover the chords now, so we can get into these chord progressions. The chords we're using today are A minor, F, F major seven, D minor, G six, and C major. Let's start with A minor. A minor goes like this. Your first finger is on fret one of the B string, your second finger is on fret two of the D string, and your third finger is on fret two of the G string. Strum the A to high E strings. Awesome. Let's do C major next, since it's pretty much the same chord, just moving your third finger to fret three of the A string. A minor, C major. So just put your third finger here on fret three of the A, strum the A to high E strings. Let's do F major next. Here's an easy way of playing F, just playing the middle, four strings. Your first finger is on fret one of the B string, second finger on fret two of the G string, fourth finger on fret three, of the D string and third finger on fret three of the A string. Strum just the middle four strings. If you wrap your thumb over the top and use your first finger to mute the high E string, 
you can actually strum all six and only hear those four. But during the F major 7 chord, we want to include that high E string. So this is how you play an F major 7. Nice. Now we have G6. G6 goes like this. Your first finger is on fret 2 of the A string, your second finger is on fret 3 of the low E string, and your third finger is on fret 3 of the B string. Strum all six strings. That high E string, yes, is open. And that's what makes this chord a six chord instead of just a G major. G6. All right. A minor, C, D minor, F, F major 7, and G6 are all the chords that we're using today. Let's talk about the first chord progression that happens during the intro when that riff is going on. So we're going to play these chords, A minor to F, and then D minor to A minor. That's the chord progression. You play it two times around, and that's how the intro goes. Now, I have to talk about something pretty important. We're going to be anticipating the F chord and the last A minor chord. That means we're going to start strumming it on the upbeat of 4 instead of on the downbeat of 1. 1, 2, 3, 4, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 1. Notice how I was switching the chord and hitting an up strum. So that's what that means when you say anticipated. So we're going to play it before beat one. All right, so what was that strum pattern? It goes like this. Down, down, up, down, up, down, up, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, up, down, up, up, down, 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 up, 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 going to include this strum pattern in the uh, tabs in the description so you can really look at what's going on for all the different downs and ups in that pattern. Okay, the verse is going to be the same chord progression just strummed a little differently. It goes A minor to F to D minor back to A minor and you're going to play it four times around instead of twice and again we have a different strum pattern. What you're going to do is do a percussive strum on beats two and four. One, two, three, 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 four. To do a percussive strum, just take this part of your hand and put it on the strings before you strum it. So it ends up making this slappy snare kind of sound, like that. All right, so that's going to be how the verse goes. Four times through that A minor, F, D minor, A minor chord progression. And then after that we go to the pre-chorus. The pre-chorus we're switching the chord progression up. We're going to go to C, D minor, A minor, and F. So just those four chords, four times around, kind of using the same strum pattern from before. We're opening, opening it up a little bit. Still anticipating. This time it's the D minor and the F that we're anticipating. Now, on the fourth time, what you're going to do is only strum that last F chord once. You want to go... And 
just leave it because we're building up to the chorus right there. So again, on the last time, on the fourth time, just hang out on the F chord. You're just gonna strum it once and let it go and then pick it up on the downbeat of one on the chorus. In the chorus, we're gonna play the same chord progression that we did for the intro. A minor, F, D minor, and A minor again. And we're playing it with the riff simultaneously. So again, you can choose whatever part you wanna play when you're playing that section. So that's the chorus. Still gonna play with that anticipated strum pattern. There's nothing really new in the strum department. And then after you do the chorus, you're onto another verse. So you're gonna do the same chord progression even more. However, if you listen to the recording, there's not a lot of guitar in the second verse. It kind of is just a lot of bass, some electric guitar, but not really strumming stuff, playing these little chord shapes around the neck. But after you do the second verse, you're into another pre-chorus. The guitar comes back in on the pre-chorus. So you're doing your C, your D minor, your A minor, your F thing on the fourth time, hanging out on the F, going into the next chorus. So it's all very similar. We're seeing the same patterns over and over again. But after the second chorus, which is going to be four times through instead of two times through because we have that extended part at the end there, we're gonna to go to a bridge. And the bridge is where we have our F major seven and G six chords. We're gonna go F major seven to G six to A minor. The A minor is two measures. So still anticipating, but only doing one strum per chord this time. One, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four. It's just a standard middle eight. Eight measures long, and then we're on to the next pre-chorus. And the pre-chorus there, just like all the others, we're playing C, D minor, A minor, F, on the fourth time, hanging out on the F so we can really ramp it up to the last chorus. And the last chorus is gonna be just the same as the previous chorus, four times through our chorus chord progression, A minor, F, D minor, A minor, while the riff is happening at the same time. So that's gonna be how the song goes. You got all the different chord progressions, you got all the strum patterns and the riff to. I'm going to include right here a link to the playthrough so you can hear how the whole thing goes from beginning to end. I hope you enjoyed this lesson and if you did you can hit that like button. My name is Sean. Uh, subscribe for more lessons just like this one. All right I'll see you next time with another lesson.